reading. Damn, I forgot what all that shit just said. Stormtroopers with infamous bad aim somehow managed to actually kill enough rebel soldiers here to take over the ship. They survived this. Darth Vader could choke fools just by using a hand gesture. We learned that later on in this very movie. So why is he getting all touch me in the morning with this rebel scum, man? Vader's got to get that close to a guy who's committed his life to overthrowing the government. You get that close, homie can grab Vader's lightsaber and kill the Sith out of Mr. Suddenly Touchy Feely. Yo, Vader, choke that chicken from across the room, bro. And bring me the passengers. I want them alive. You didn't seem to have a problem firing on the ship or having your stormtroopers blasting away when they torched the door down. Leia's plan is to shoot once at four stormtroopers, then Prometheus' school of running away from things into the open hallway that offers no cover. I'm not getting in bed. Didn't Vader tell these fools he wanted passengers alive? Hey, it's a good thing that the Star Destroyer didn't completely swallow the smaller ship, or else this escape pod would have crashed into the floor somewhere. Hold your fire. There's no life forms. Unless this is the first day that droids were released to an unsuspecting buying public, everyone in the galaxy knows about droids and their capabilities, but they just let the escape pod go because of no life forms they don't even want to shoot the thing down just to be safe man these guys are the biggest fuck ups in all the star wars movies they must have short circuited oh right you're right that stupid assumption is the most likely reason for an escape pod to jettison from a recently captured rebel ship under siege an escape pod was jettisoned during the fighting but no life forms were born you mean an escape pod like one escape pod why did the other guy say, There goes another one. Which implies more than one. Droids are moving so slowly that there's no way they shouldn't be caught immediately by Vader's troopers. R2? Well, that's convenient. They spent the whole afternoon going in opposite directions and still got to the same place. Those Jawas cover some damn ground, man. Also, do they have this main sand crawler ship going around while they dump off loads of Jawas to hide in the mountains in case lost robots show up? I guess you're right, George. This scene felt so incomplete without the CGI riding lizard in the background. Also, isn't it lucky that these things have claws that don't leave any tracks? That makes their appearance more cost-effective and unrealistic. Look, sir, Troy! That conveniently drop pieces of themselves along the way like breadcrumbs. Robot roll call. I suppose you're programmed for etiquette and protocol. Uncle Owen rejects droids immediately with a simple no, and knows exactly what C-3PO does just by looking at him, but mysteriously talks to him anyway. I'm guessing so C-3PO can persuade Uncle Owen to buy him. But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. All right, every right-thinking human being on the planet is going to send this awkward line, and it's equally sinnable reading. Heavens, we were looking for some Damon here, and we got some Affleck instead. But this power converter thing sounds like a lie to me, man. Like when my friend Malcolm would say, I'm going to city walk, eh? And then he'd secretly hook up with dudes at bear bars. So I'm saying Luke wanted to go to Tashi, but it wasn't his power he wanted converted. He was sneaking away for public restroom rendezvous with Arcturians, man. Male or female, don't matter with Arcturian, baby. Red droid melts down conveniently so that R2 can get a job and stay with his buddy. Hey, what are you trying to push on us? Hey, yeah. I mean, I thought you were reputable salesmen with, with your sand crawler full of random robot selections. What about that one? What about that blue one? You mean the one you instantly dismissed earlier? Luke is a teenager who plays with Model T-16 Skyhoppers. Probably so you knew what to buy when you went to the toy store. I'm not even sure which planet I'm on. Well, if there's a bright center to the universe, you're on the planet that it's farthest from. He's a droid. It's not your dude, bro. He doesn't understand sarcasm, man. Homie may be fluent in over six million forms of communication, but wise ass ain't one of them. Stop confusing your sex droids. Wait, they're not sex droids? The ones shaped like a human and little Mr. Right Height? They're not sex droids. Nah, then that's a sin right there. Who is she? She's beautiful. How can you tell? It's a blue hologram full of 1970s-ness. Also, if he can discern whether she's beautiful or not, why can't he figure out that this is Princess Leia? You know about the Civil War going on, and she has the title of princess, so how is she unfamiliar to you? I'm called Obi-Wan Kenobi. I thought he might have meant old Ben. Say, both these guys named Kenobi. You think they know each other? Homie changes the Obi-Wan part of his name and keeps the easily identifying Kenobi last name. If he'd gone with Ben Johnson, literally none of the rest of this movie could ever happen, man. And don't tell me it's because Kenobi knew one day, or one day, Luke would need to find him, man. He's in hiding, like all the Jedi that are left alive. Just admit it, man. Dude's got a good heart, but he chose a stupid, stupid alias. He has too much of his father in him. That's what I'm afraid of. Understatement foreshadowing. Is that undershadowing? How is it this dark out with two sons? You'd think the combined power would make it look like daytime out here. Also, suns this close together would cause wicked insanity on this planet. One sun would heat the other sun, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. The director said, okay Luke, just stare at the suns, because any line you might say would honestly make this scene worse. It's too dangerous with all the sand people. That's racist. Look at there's a droid on the scanner. Dead ahead. Thank God we went in the one direction R2 did so we could find him. Hit the accelerator! Who's driving this thing? You or C-3PO? <laughs> He's probably saying, hold your fire, there's no life forms. Obvious reverse job is obvious, but instead of killing Luke, he just knocks him out for some reason. How did he knock him out? 
It can't be with the weapon he's holding. That's sure death if you get hit by that thing. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. Obi-Wan basically half truths his way through this entire movie. I was once a Jedi Knight, the same as your father. Now this is the first time Luke's even hearing about his Jedi dad, but the real news here is that his uncle has been lying his ass off for years, man. Forget the dad you never knew stuff. This Uncle Owen, this farmer who's trying to pull moisture out of the desert like a dick, he's the liar you always thought he was, man. Your whole life is a lie. Get your revenge, Luke. You go back and you burn your lying uncle alive right in front of his own house. Oh, too late. Not as clumsy or random as a blaster. Damn, Obi-Wan, you might have wanted to tell Luke which way to point that thing before turning it on. Which is what I tell all my sex droids. Luke could have accidentally cut off the head of old man exposition. Movie franchise nearly sends Obi-Wan to his death 75 minutes too early, ending said movie franchise again. The Force? The Force is what gives the Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. And something about midichlorians, but that's not nearly as cool as what I'm saying. It surrounds us and penetrates us. The Force kind of sounds like a sex offender. Years ago, you served my father in the Clone Wars. Anytime you want to tell Luke that this is his long-lost sister, here's your chance, Obi-Wan. Don't try to frighten us with your sorcerer's ways, Lord Vader. Oh, look at Mr. Keeping It Real, man. This has to be his first day on the job, am I right? Has Darth Vader never shown his powers at any time during this guy's life? I imagine that right before he left for work, his wife was telling him, you gotta be more assertive in that job if you want to get ahead, honey. Don't be afraid to speak your mind to your bosses. They like people who challenge them. Slow-ass stormtroopers only recently killed these Jawa fools. They left the Star Destroyer one minute after the droids, but are somehow a day and a half behind. What the f***? It looks like the Sand People did this all right. I've never heard of them hitting anything this big before. They didn't. But we are meant to think they did. Because Imperial Stormtroopers know a sh ton about Tatooine and Sand People in order to frame their ass. And these last points, too accurate for Sand People. Only Imperial Stormtroopers are so precise. <laughs> Look, I know we gotta get Luke into space somehow, but the stormtroopers just go and melt his aunt and uncle and don't think, I don't know, maybe we should ask some questions. Maybe we should figure out if this boy is coming home soon. Maybe with the droids we're looking for. But they don't, man. They just leave. They just create destruction, just leave. You know what would have been more metal than this? If they ripped the flesh from these dirt farmers' bones and dressed up in their skins. Can you imagine that? Luke comes home and he's greeted by stormtroopers wearing the bloody skins of Aunt Peru and Uncle Owen draped over their helmets. And they're asking about droids. Like, I would tell them anything, man. I'd even tell them what I was really doing whenever I went to Tashi Station. Ah, I see the Death Star has branded their truth serum robot so that all visitors know this isn't some knockoff Death Star shit here. Also, how is Leia able to deny the truth serum's effects? Don't tell me she's a Jedi. We don't know that yet. And she doesn't know that yet. And if she Jedi'd her way out of this somehow, Vader would have sensed it. Obi-Wan said, Okay, C-3PO, let's burn a giant pile of Jawa bodies, because that's the absolute last of their race, and no one will ever miss them. Burials are for closers only. I want to come with you to Alderaan. Even though I have tons of other options at this point. Also, Luke doesn't seem all that broken up about his aunt and uncle dying, does he? He must have had a titanic cry on the way to the Jawa massacre site. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Except Gary, Indiana, of course. Ew, you've got some obvious phantom menace in my new hope. I can't abide those jobbers. Disgusting creatures. That's racist. This iconic tavern scene does not contain an alien lap dance. Among the many creatures here, Satan also likes to hang out in the cantina. That's bassist. We don't serve their kind here. 3PO gets a taste of his own racist medicine 90 seconds after dismissing the Jawas. I don't like the look of this. All the unnecessarily added CGI bullshit. Me neither. Like every other citizen of the first world with enough time on their hands to care about this kind of shit, we're also mad that Han no longer shoots Greedo first like the cold-blooded badass he was in the 1977 cut of the movie. So we're going to sit in this. But did you have to make Greedo such a horrible shot? This might be the worst shot in the history of movies. Man, he's literally three feet away and he misses like a dick. Dude's supposed to be a bounty hunter. Is this his first day on the job? Like the mouthy guy in the Death Star? Is Star Wars really a movie about a bunch of people starting their first day at a new job? Han is addicted to Jabba's tail, and these special effects are addicted to the audience. What's that flashing? Luke is the most annoying backseat driver since your mom. Commence primary ignition. It takes 10 seconds for the Death Star to shoot its laser after this. Remember that, kids, when this takes forever later. This yellow monster dies immediately from getting lifted. What a pussy. You mean it controls your actions? Partially. But it also obeys your commands. Oh. 
Wait, what? Your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. Yeah, but I'm gonna guess your eyes don't deceive you as much as everything else you use to detect things. It's not like the Jedi's going around blindfolding each other before a lightsaber match. Yeah, what a bunch of bullshit that is. This asshole Luke isn't feeling the Force already after spending just a couple hours with that floaty ball. I call it luck. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. You just experience luck. It's okay to give in and accept it. Let the hate flow through you. I told you she would never consciously betray the Rebellion. And to emphasize this point, I'm going to start gesturing after I talk. Terminate her. Immediately. Immediately on the Death Star means f***ing around for a couple of hours, waiting for the Millennium Falcon to arrive and save the day. Ah, uh, we come out of hyperspace with meteor showers. Did they get out of hyperspace just before chunks of Alderaan slammed into their ship? Because in my experience, that's some serious luck right there. Also lucky is that the Death Star just happens to be around Alderaan right now. That way you can save Princess Leia and this trip won't be meaningless. Well, he ain't gonna be around long enough to tell anybody about us. Why is it taking so long to get in range to blast this one little TIE fighter? This ship made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. They must be trying to return the stolen plans to the princess. She may yet be of some use to us. You can't possibly think that they'll get the idea to rescue Leia from her prison, or that they'll even find out she's here. Remember, it takes a crazy-ass plan to get into the control room and R2 messing around with the computer to even find out that information. Even if you have an idea to capture them, put them in Leia's cell, and hope she blabs to them about where the secret base is, this is silly. Leia bullshit you and proved too strong for the mind probe, so she's officially useless. Darth Vader needs to start setting up charges on the Millennium Falcon, take the Death Star plans back, destroy Luke, and execute Leia at the same time, while his children get baptized in the Catholic Church, Godfather style. Oh, wait. There's no one on board, sir. Let me get this straight. You have sensors that can tell whether there are life forms on an escape pod, but you can't detect life forms on a ship inside the Death Star? Knowing this, anybody could send a ship full of killer droids buried in the floorboards to kill and take out the entire Empire. And people bitch about our TSA. I sense something. A presence I've not felt since... Since when? Since when? There's no one here. They've already reported to Vader that no one is here, so these stormtroopers were sent on the ship to basically what? Walk around and confirm what the last crew of stormtroopers just did a second ago? The stormtroopers are still on the ramp exiting the ship, and Han picks this exact moment to open the secret panel on the floor. And also, I guess he figures there's no way they're coming back, or that it could be a trick. I use them for smuggling. Yeah, bone smuggling. Snooch! I apologize if that joke fell for Snooch again! But here's the thing. Your big conflict with Jabba was that you had to let go of cargo when you got boarded, man, but you have all these secret panels in the floor that the Empire can't find. So why do you ever sweat getting boarded? Sounds like a rookie move, like maybe it was your first day on the job or something like that. This movie is just like the office in outer space, man. Han is Jim, Luke is Dwight, and Greedo is like Ryan the Temp. And why did Obi-Wan get his own compartment while Luke and Han had to go three-way with the Wookiee? That beats my fanfiction, but why? The scanners pick up anything, report it immediately. Oh, so this is the scanning team. Why didn't some of the stormtroopers stay on board until the scanning team was ready to go? Scanning the ship requires loading this huge cumbersome box on the ship itself. I know this is set a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but you have technology that beats us here in 2015. And I know that simple heat signature technology would tell us there are assholes on this ship. Blaster fire inside heavily guarded ship raises no alarm or suspicion. It sure is lucky that Han and Luke blasted the two stormtroopers with the exact same size uniforms they needed. And those suits are remarkably intact after getting blasted a second ago. You know, between his howling and your blasting everything inside, so one of the whole station doesn't know we're here. Luke Skywalker, too, would be excellent at cinema sense. <laughs> Phallic data extraction. Also, thankfully, the Death Star has a computer port that has access to the entire station that also happens to match R2-D2's output thingy. What is it? I'm afraid I'm not quite sure, sir. He says I found her and keeps repeating she's here. C-3PO defines the problem with the pronoun game while R2-D2 plays it. Well, who? Who has he found? Princess Leia. You just said you didn't know who he was talking about. And R2-D2 has not said anything since the conversation started. Well, more wealth than you can imagine. Luke is drawn by the power of boners to take on the whole goddamn Death Star. And Han is drawn by the power of money boners. There is no way the Empire created something so innocent and jovial. Stormtrooper aim is only good while good guys occupy the costumes. Although, it still kind of takes them a while, too. Boring conversation anyway. I'm surprised this radio didn't shoot Han first. Han and Chewie somehow need to retreat while holding this super tiny opening in the elevator these troopers have carved. Then, the entire rest of this scene, none of the Imperial troopers come down this hall and fire into this obvious escape hole into the garbage compactor. Everyone survives this. Will you forget it? I already tried it! It's magnetically sealed! Bullsh**! When did you ever have time to try shooting the door before Han jumped down to shoot, man? He jumped down four seconds after you did. And hell, Chewbacca was standing there at the door when Han landed. So you're a lying f**k, Luke Skywalker. I call you Fib Fortuna. 
That's a Deep Cuts reference, man. Achievement unlocked. There's something alive in here. The Empire just recently threw a live swimming creature into this garbage disposal, just before our heroes jumped down in it. Because how else would it have survived the numerous amounts of compacting unless it's Gumby or some shit? How does Luke get swallowed whole by the shallow water this creature is in? Okay, at this point, Luke is dead. That dude drowned. He comes from a desert planet with virtually no water, and no practice with water. He's out of his element. Hey. The Empire's addicted to tall stormtroopers. If you hurry, you might catch them! These still aren't the droids we're looking for. What?! <laughs> yeah, what? Thank God for extremely slow trash compactors. <laughs> Han shoots one guy and the entire stormtrooper unit starts running away. And it's not like they're setting a logical trap, because the ship is in a different direction. <laughs> Will Storm Helm Trooper. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Basically, I'll be able to occasionally talk to Luke through ghost power. So there. Honestly, this is pretty badass. And it makes sense for the plot, too. Obi-Wan knows he's outmatched, he knows Luke would stick around to try and save him and would never get on the ship. And so, we will remove five sins for Obi-Wan's badassery right here. No! No. Here's a blanket, Luke. Wouldn't want you to catch cold or some shit. That's it! We did it! We did it! For the record, Princess Leia is a badass. But in this scene, she didn't do anything. You're sure the homing beacon is secure aboard their ship? This might explain why the stormtroopers were so awful at shooting our heroes earlier. But how did they coordinate this plan with everyone on the Death Star? Was it, make the shooting look good but don't hit them? You might die, but it's for the greater good. Or did Vader set it up so the heroes could escape, but didn't mind if they got killed in the process? They're tracking us. Not this ship, sister. Well, your male confidence certainly is convincing. I guess we should just go straight to the Rebel base without any precautions. An analysis of the plans provided by Princess Leia. Princess Leia. We'll hear all your stories when we get back, all right? It'll be like old times, Luke. They'll never stop us. <laughs> this guy is trying to jinx the entire mission, and he's definitely dead. We're passing through the mechanic field. For some reason, the Death Star doesn't use its tractor beam to render these ships useless. Obi-Wan turned it off, but he didn't destroy it. I'm going in. Cover me, Porkins. What have I told you about calling me Porkins? We've analyzed their attack, sir, and there is a danger. Should I have your ship standing by? Or maybe get some of our ships in formation over the one weakness this entire space station has, so that a direct hit doesn't destroy us. Vader locks on his target, then immediately sprays fire over everything except his target for the first two seconds of firing. Just like old times, man. They'll never stop you. Use the force, Luke. Your targeting computer is a piece of dog shit, Luke. Commence primary ignition. Okay, guys, this took 10 seconds with Alderaan, so it's gonna take about as long to- Holy sh! And it takes 48 seconds for this thing to even get close to firing, man. So the first time they use it, the Death Star unleashes a massive payload all over the face, neck, and chest of Alderaan. That money shots it out of existence, but it takes way longer if it wants to go again. You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home. This is the most erotically charged line in the movie, and something I say to Jason Mewes whenever we go to City Walk, if you follow me. <laughs> God, how can you not get the chills? I'll take another five off for Luke's hit here because the execution of this scene is awesome. <laughs> hey man, in the excitement, I'd call her Carrie too. On some nights, she might be Darlene. You don't know, role playing can be a powerful tool. Oh my God, that's his sister, isn't it? How come Chewbacca doesn't get a medal, man? He was in the Falcon too. He helped take out Vader and save Luke's ass. And look, he even yells about it. At this point, he goes like, where's my medal? And everyone just claps. Like, yay, the status quo is maintained on this little animal farm, where all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. This is horse shit. It's always bothered me about this movie, man. Let the Wookiee win a medal. Is it really winning, since he so clearly deserves it? I'll leave it at that. Hey, that's how the last movie started. Also, reading. Also, if I'm supposed to be reading and absorbing all this, f*** you. And if there's a quiz, I'm keying your car, Teach. As we're about to see, the Empire is going to get their asses kicked yet again, with Luke Skywalker leading the charge. Aside from the Death Star, during this entire series, we never see the Empire bring an aerial attack on a planet. They just send down these cumbersome Imperial walkers. So what did they do to actually win something for once? And if they were winning, why were so many of the rebels allowed to flee across the galaxy? Okay, so this is a remote ice planet I'm assuming where no one really lived before, because it's colder than f But the rebels came here and then found, tamed, and learned how to ride the indigenous Tauntauns? And built a whole base inside the mountain in three years? And no one from the Empire had any idea? Don't you think this was a little like the Oregon Trail for a while? You have died of dysentery. Well, that was some convenient timing, assuming this planet is not super tiny. What are the odds Luke's patrol coincides perfectly with the probe's arrival? Betty girl! Hey, what's the matter? Discount horse. Movie rips off Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer's abominable snowman. Thankfully for Luke, this species of snow monster drags its prey back to the cave before fully killing it. Holy sh**! Who would have guessed that of all three movies, including the one where she wears a bikini, that this would be the sexiest Leia moment of all? Discount Hoth Sheik C-3PO. 
I thought you had decided to stay. Well, the bounty hunter we ran into when Lord Mendel changed my mind. First off, Han refers to some other adventure we have no context for unless we read the f***ing books. Second off, Han decides it's time to go because he ran into a bounty hunter on some other planet who obviously doesn't know where he is now. It's been three years. Does Han actually think it's best to risk his freedom by going to Jabba now? Excuse me, sir. Might I in yes, sir? Covering a robot's mouth actually stops it from making noise. Huh. Who knew? Are the speeders ready? Uh, not yet. We're having some trouble adapting them to the cold. Which is weird, because everything else works on this planet regardless of cold. Your Tauntaun will freeze before you reach the first marker. Then I'll see you in hell. Hungry Wampa decided to knock out Luke and put him in the fridge before eating him. And Luke has been dangling upside down unconscious for who knows how long. Blood running to his head. And before you go telling me his Jedi ways help him avoid traditional physiological problems like that, I'll point out his Jedi ways did jack and shit to help him avoid landing in this situation to begin with. The real question is, how did that lightsaber manage to fall close enough to Luke for this, but far enough away that it couldn't have just slipped out of his holster and fallen straight down? I get what you're going for here, I really do, but in the last movie you showed me this asshole using the Force while blind to deflect unseen laser blasts from a drone. How can he do that, but not this? <laughs> what is it about this series and cutting arms or hands off? Luke is smart, right? Why doesn't he just kill that thing and stay in the cave? Han's so worried about Nightfall he's headed out to find Luke, and he does, but only because Luke is stupid enough to wander out of the cave just before Nightfall. So Luke left the beast's cave, fell unconscious for a bit, but then woke back up and started walking again? Really? Luckily for Luke and Han, this planet's freezing temperatures do not lead to hypothermia and quick death. Ooh. This asshole only shows up in the absolute most extreme Luke might die situations. Why couldn't he appear to Luke four hours earlier and say, Luke, do not explore the meteorite you saw? You will go to the Dagobah system. Provided, of course, that Han sticks you in a dead tauntaun so that you can live. Also, the Dagobah system sounds racist. There you will learn from Yoda, the Jedi Master who instructed me. Sorry I didn't tell you this sooner over the last three years. I was baking brownies. Minutes in my time are years in your time. I still say that in all the Star Wars movies, the most unbelievable thing is that Han somehow finds Luke during dusk on a huge snow planet. <laughs> tauntaun ex machina. But it'll keep you warm. How does Han stuff Luke into a tauntaun belly? They're not much bigger than humans. Han somehow survives the bitter cold all through the night without getting inside the tauntaun himself. That sounded dirty, but Han should be frozen much like Luke was a minute ago. Why is this asshole flying up and down over the hills, rather than just flying over the hills? Does he like to cheat death on rescue missions? Hoth Spa! Also, these things have very little privacy. This guy has to rehab in front of everyone in a diaper. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. <laughs> What's worse, this lame-ass insult or the fact that Chewie found it funny? Neither the Force nor Obi-Wan has told Luke about Leia being his sister yet, even though it's been three years. This must be a massive, very dark practical joke. Translation, this is some fucked up shit right here. It's metal. Then it couldn't be one of those creatures. Could be a speeder, one of ours. You mean the speeders you were just told last night can't go out in the cold? Can we all at least agree that in this one instance, Han shot second? That is the system. And I'm sure Skywalker is with them. Set your course for the Hoth system. Look, if you're sure, as you say, why did it take a drone report and a photograph for you to figure out Skywalker's location? The rebels that are alerted to our presence. Admiral Ozzel came out of light speed too close to the system. Why didn't Vader specifically leave an order not to do that? Or is the movie saying no one could have possibly known that and Vader's just being a dick? Sir, rebel ships are coming into our sector. Good. Our first catch of the day. After one small ship beat the Death Star, ignorance and confidence are the same thing. So you can land these things outside the energy shield, but you can't get some quick fighters down here to perform an aerial assault. Look, these things are awesome in many ways, but that doesn't mean they make sense. Besides, how are these things not using tracks like tanks to move? They needed to use actual freaking legs. Also, movie completely glosses over how much slipping and sliding should be going on with all this snow and ice. Rogue group, use your harpoons and tow cables. Go for the legs. Why the hell do these small fighters have tow cables? For towing a 1974 Buick? And harpoons? For, I guess, whaling? God damn, falling down makes these Imperial walkers go from bulletproof to flammable as hell. The birthing process between walkers on Hoth was accelerated tenfold, and the baby is already walking. I didn't even see any f***ing, so this is amazing. Ku Klux Stormtrooper. Luke survives this crash. Honestly, how do you guys even build all this underground infrastructure in snow anyway? This bucket of bolts is never gonna get us past that blockade. That's kind of true, but why was Luke's X-Wing somehow able to get through the blockade no problem? Man, this ship is always taking off just in the nick of time, and while being shot at. 
I'm sure it takes off under normal calm circumstances plenty of times, but we don't ever seem to see it. Vader senses or sees the Falcon leave, but does not apparently sense his son Luke, fellow Force user, a few hundred feet above him on the snow. Okay, so why can't he use the Force to maybe even slightly knock the ship off course and crash it into the mountain? As we learned from Yoda, size doesn't matter, so why not at least try? Or rather, do, because there is no try. Here's another thing. How are there not any Imperial ships guarding the exit off the planet? We even heard them talk about a blockade earlier, so where is it? And the Rebels didn't find some other side of the planet where the blockade wouldn't affect them, so what gives? Two of these three Star Destroyers pursuing the Falcon run into each other. How is that possible? How do you not see another Star Destroyer in your path? Do you not have radar, training, skill? Who's flying the ship right now? Leia? Autopilot evasion software? That wasn't a laser blast, I'm Nita. Like an asteroid? How does an asteroid hit you and you're not dead yet? Water creatures in the Star Wars franchise never find the heroes tasty. Oh yeah, and how is R2 still working right now with all that sludge in his system? Whoa, that does not look like James Earl Jones at all. Does that include shutting me down too? No, I need you to talk to the Falcon, find out what's wrong with the hyperdrive. But he just said what was wrong with the hyperdrive a few minutes ago, didn't he? I noticed earlier the hyperdrive motivator has been damaged. And you didn't fix it because you hit the asteroid field before you could do anything. So that's still the problem, right? I'm looking for someone. Looking? Found someone you have, I would say, hmm? Tonight on Unsolved Mysteries, we'll try to figure out where Yoda's sense of humor went after this one scene in The Empire Strikes Back. Luke's dinner consists of Cheetos, blocks that look like cheese, some sort of white candy or pills, hush puppies, and strips of drywall. You seek Yoda. You know him? Mmm. Take it to him, I will. Just like Obi-Wan, Yoda initially pretends not to be the person he actually is. Mostly just to f*** with the audience. I mean, Luke. I believe, sir, it says that the power coupling on the negative axis has been polarized. Is that another way of saying the hyperdrive motivator is damaged, or is this some completely new invented bullshit reason for the hyperdrive not to work? Sir, sir, I've isolated the reverse power flux coupling. The C in C-3PO stands for cock block. Where the f*** is this? Why are holograms just shooting out of the floor here? Why are there screens in some instances and random holograms in others? I have no doubt. This boy is the offspring of Anakin Skywalker. Which is a weird thing to say to Anakin Skywalker. Also, didn't the very fact that his name is Luke Skywalker tip you off? You can't seriously expect us to believe that after Luke destroyed the Death Star, the Empire didn't hear what the hell his name was. Also, Luke was hidden on another planet so the Darth Vader couldn't find him. Yet he kept the name Skywalker. I cannot teach him. The boy has no patience. Yoda talks about Luke to a ghost in front of Luke. And this is his way of revealing himself to actually be Yoda. This one, a long time have I watched. All his life has he looked away to the future, to the horizon. Maybe because you assholes stuck him on a shitty distant planet with his aunt and uncle and gave him no other type of future to look forward to. How the hell do you blame him for that? Are you saying if he'd stuck around on Tatooine and enjoyed dusting crops, you'd have flown out here like magic to train him? I think not. Either way, he's not a Jedi. What the fuck? You are reckless. So was I, if you remember. Obi-Wan is basically Jedi Ghost Lawyer here. He is too old. Is Yoda cranky? Does he not really want to train Luke? Why the 100 excuses thing? I know we're building tension for the audience. I mean Luke, but other than that, why is he so resistant? This movie is basically saying Ghost Obi-Wan is wiser than 800-year-old Yoda, which is just f***ing stupid. Cool for sure, but how does a creature this giant survive on an asteroid with little to no food available? A Jedi uses the Force for knowledge and defense. Never for attack. But tell me why I can't- No, no, there is no why. Jedi Master gets frustrated with obvious questions. I thought you assholes were supposed to be at peace with everything, even annoying trainees. That place is strong with the dark side of the Force. A domain of evil it is. There's a domain of evil sitting around just being evil in the Dagobah system? What the f*** for? No bad weapons. You will not need them. Because you see this evil domain, strong with the dark side of the Force, out in the middle of nowhere, it... Just, well, it's here for psychological reasons. In the unlikely case, someone comes down here. It's a strict Freudian, I hear. What will really bake your noodle is what this would have been if Luke hadn't brought his weapons with him. Also, face your adversary in a dream before facing them in real life cliche. Someone set this video game to the easy setting. Symbolism. Also, Luke cuts off Dream Vader's head and sees his own face inside, and still can't figure out what's going on. The Force is literally screaming the truth at him, but he's not listening. So Darth Vader's orders are that he wants the passengers alive. So why are these millions of green lasers getting shot at the ship right now? What happens if one of these things ends up destroying the ship? Try not. Do. Or do not. There is no try. Luminous beings shall be not this crude matter. Yoda breaks the teacher-student boundary rule. 
Okay, so after this big talk about how rocks and spaceships are different from each other, and size doesn't matter and all that jazz, Yoda then proceeds to power the ship out of the water, but with considerable effort, I might add. If the Force supposedly doesn't distinguish the size of objects, this thing should have emerged immediately. I don't... I don't believe it. That is why you fail. Pimp. I'm taking a sin off of that, too. Yoda is too badass. Captain Solo, this time you have gone too far. What the hell is he blabbing about? Gone too far? In what way? This is an amazing move of considerable cunning, and it got them out of being captured or killed. It, at the very least, bought time, even if he didn't have a plan after that. Instead of waiting even a few minutes after floating away with the garbage before taking off, Han takes off immediately, thereby allowing himself to be trailed. Bubba Vett makes one of the luckiest guesses ever and has himself shot out with the trash to follow the Falcon, just in case it was doing the old attach yourself to the big ship so it can't be read by their scopes and leave when they empty their trash trick. Also, why can't the Falcon detect this ship right behind it? If you leave now, help them you could, you will destroy all for which they have fought and suffered. Because your dad is Darth Vader and he can turn you to the dark side and the rebels would lose the war. But that's a spoiler for the audience that you, the most important character in this movie, is just better off not knowing. Welcome, Leia. Leia isn't pregnant with Lando's baby already. It is you and your abilities the Emperor wants. And also, Darth Vader is your fa- Damn, I can't tell him that until the big surprise, can I? If you end your training now, if you choose the quick and easy path, as Vader did, you will become an agent of evil. Except he doesn't. So, in your face, false prediction Yoda. That boy is our last hope. No. There is another. Kind of makes you wonder what would have happened if Luke got killed or turned to the dark side. Would Leia have received a vision to go to Digama somehow? But Yoda would have died before she got there, leaving nobody to train her. I'm guessing her training would have consisted of going to the library, learning Jedi Master from Microfish, and also stuff about demons. Lots and lots of demons. <laughs> Three away. Aha! Proof that Cloud City is funded by Gringotts. I'm surprised Vader didn't shoot Han first. I had no choice. They arrived right before you did. How did they do that? Even if Boba Fett tells Vader that they're going to Cloud City immediately after he starts following the Falcon, the Falcon has a huge head start, and this is after the Star Destroyers went into light speed in a different direction. Empire scientists create another what the fuck is that thing for a torture device. It looks like it's made of at least five failed science projects. This contraption does things so horrible, it's better left off screen, because whatever bull that thing is doing is probably bull but it sure does hurt. Oh yes, that's very good, I like that. C-3PO's reconstructive porn dialogue. Oh my! What have you done? I'm backwards, you sleepy purple! You know, C-3PO was kind of an annoying character in the first movie, but lovably so. In Empire, he's a whiny know-it-all who's actually kind of mean. I love you. I know. No, Walt Disney. Skywalker has just landed, Lord. Good. See to it that he finds his way in here. Awesome. How the f do I do that? Do you think he'd respond to breadcrumbs? What the f Is David Copperfield pushing that thing? I Lando. No! No, don't, it's a trap! Somehow, despite this scene, it's still Admiral Akbar that is most remembered for saying it's a trap. Also, like any hero in any adventure, Luke ignores his friend's warning that it's all a trap, because the power of space boners is stronger. Oh, they actually succeeded in following Vader's orders to lead Luke here, by parading the prisoners around in circles below this arena until he showed up, apparently. Do you think that after what you did to Han, the world Oh, come on. This is one of those things where I understand, but I don't understand. He just risked his own neck to take you out of custody. But we're going to waste time with trust issues after a baller move like that? Just try it out! We don't need any of your help. Really? Like, the kind that just freed you from captivity so you could escape? You don't need that kind of help? Put Captain Solo in the cargo hold. Unnecessary orders. Rest of the good guys running directly by random spot R2-D2 just happen to wind up cliche. Obi-Wan has taught you well. Why does Vader assume that Obi-Wan taught Luke? And we know that Luke doesn't quite have a hold of his thoughts and his emotions yet, so how does Yoda not pop into Darth Vader's head? And if dead Obi-Wan could have done the training, why did Luke even have to go to the Dagobah system? Already this lightsaber battle is complex enough to confirm my suspicions that Vader was merely humoring Obi-Wan last movie. Hmm, Vader starts using the Force to throw objects at Luke during the battle, which not only feels like cheating, but also makes me wonder why he doesn't do more of that shit. Well, here's the Millennium Falcon again, taking off amidst yet another hail of laser fire. <laughs> There goes another limb! No one just gets stabbed by a lightsaber in this series, do they? Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. For reasons pretty unclear, considering you would be finding out anyway via the Force, or in this case, dramatic reveal to the audience. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. 
we're gonna get a supreme bullshit explanation for this discrepancy, aren't we? Search your feelings, you know it to be true. No! No! It requires about 10 syllables to say no in Tatooine English, or Tattoo English. Also, no. Movie paints suicide as the noble choice. Luke falls off a bridge, basically to his death, and then is saved by this thing. I don't know what it is, or if Luke knew it would do this, but what a crazy asshole random this is. Well, if the antenna isn't an ex machina, him somehow grabbing onto it while falling definitely is. Look, someone's up there. How can you tell that from this distance? Luke. Father. Damn, he went right into the acceptance phase of that shocker, didn't he? Ben. Why didn't you tell me? Because if he had, it wouldn't have been a big whammy for the audience. How can this character not know he's in a movie, for Christ's sake? You guys have hyperdrive, right? Meanwhile, here's a load of rebel ships that managed to somehow escape the Hawk blockade without incident. We didn't show you that because we showed you the Millennium Falcon's escape attempt, but it totally happened. I promise. Reading. Third film of the franchise decides, you like the Death Star? We'll give you the motherfucking Death Star! Again! It's just like Jason Voorhees, that Death Star. Hey, the Death Star was a horrible failure. Let's build another one. Now, I love Jim Henson as much as the next person, but this is where the Star Wars creatures started to get that more lovable fake plastic chic look. You know, for kids. They want a wonga. Spiral Rat Penis Head has a point. Jabba's looking way chunkier and realer in 1983 than the last time we saw him, which was in 1997. Also, if Leia didn't choke him, Jabba was certainly gonna die from smoking Green Swamp heroin. Hot look, Captain Stone. And he's still frozen in carbonite. Thanks, 3PO! What could possibly have come over Master Luke? C-3PO is too smart to not understand what's going on. <laughs> this scene suggests that the robots somehow behave differently when put upside down, and that they have feeling in their feet. Also, hilariously, these brands never even touch the robot's feet. Despite all that steam you see shooting out. Tatooine loves a different kind of superhero. The Heil Hitler Spider-Man. The song Jedi Rocks. Also, it was like Lucas was wondering, hmm, how can I possibly turn Return of the Jedi into a bad movie? Everyone here appears to be enjoying this music and this dancing. Look, I like this movie. A lot more than most. But the plan here was to send three waves of troops? Droids, then Leia, Chewie, then Luke? When Luke is Jedi enough to not really need the help of any of the others? Makes for good cinema, sure, but as a military strategy, it's kind of stupid, considering every single person Luke sends ahead of him gets captured. Everyone else had to lie their way in here, but somehow Lando is just f***ing here already, man. Deal with it. Also, sneaking around Jabba's palace will require the removal of my mask. Why does Jabba have wind chimes in a place where there is rarely wind? Also, any plan that involves sneaking into a room with this many creatures sleeping in it is a bad plan. She may be a princess and a Jedi without knowing it, but stealth is not one of Leia's strong points, as this scene proves. Futuristic melting looks oddly like how melting might look on an Atari 2600. I can't see. Seems like one of the first things Leia could have said to Han was, don't say a word, silence is golden. I really don't even know why she bothered keeping the mask on, since she was doing some highly improper in Jabba's palace anyway. Well. Delicate escape plan has time for a makeout session. Not only did Jabba catch Leia rescuing Han, he was hiding behind a curtain like he was expecting this. I agree that Leia's pretty hot, but how does Jabba, a giant snail slash excrement pile, get turned on by human women? Crime boss that has been chasing Han for years immediately puts him in a cell with his right hand man Chewie. <laughs> Jedi mind. Yeah. Jedi mind trick is the same in Tuttees and English. Master Luke, you're standing on. Even though 3PO gets interrupted, Luke ignores the warning he might be standing on something unsafe. Luke tries to force pull himself a blaster, and Jabba somehow beats him to the punch. But more importantly, why did Luke try to force pull a damn blaster? Does he not have a lightsaber? Jesus, this is the worst rescue plan ever. I mean, can you imagine how short this fight would be if Luke had his lightsaber with him? Can Luke not Jedi mind trick this thing? That thing looks pretty weak-minded. He's not even trying to make him think, this is not the food I'm looking for. Luke sticks the bone in horizontally, but it's a perfect vertical jaw prop in the next shot. Why is there any kind of electronic door down in this dungeon? Just to f*** with people who think they've found a way to escape? Magic Gate appears out of nowhere in this sequence, giving Luke the proper gate ex machina he needs. Luke throws the skull instead of just using the force to sling it. You could argue that Luke highly underused the force in this battle. Star Wars succumbs to subliminal ad placement and allows Joe Camel to hawk cigarettes during the movie. In his belly you will find a new definition of pain and suffering as you are slowly digested over a thousand years. Luckily I'll die of hunger, thirst, any number of things in just a few days, so the thousand years thing is overkill, unless I'm being fed and watered while I'm down there. Thank God for the special editions so I can have this shot of the herd of f***er rams to help set the emotional stage for the Sarlacc scene. Bar 2D2. Just stick close to Chewie and Lando. Han should be freaking out at the mere mention of Lando, the dude that sold him out in the last movie, because he got sold out and then went to sleep and literally just got up a few minutes ago and should still fucking hate Lando. I've taken care of everything. Oh, great.
Han acts like Luke isn't the guy who murdered the f***ing Death Star. In order to fall into the pit of the Sarlacc, you must walk a plank first. As we soon see, the plank becomes a perfect way to ex machina this sh real quick. This takes forever, and none of the bad guys kill Luke while he's flipping around or waiting for his lightsaber to fall in his hands. On the other end of this, why didn't Luke command that thing to come to him faster? Also, I see, the lightsaber was hidden inside R2-D2, because you assumed it'd be better to have it now than back in Jabba's lair where you could have smoked all the fools in seconds. Gotcha. <laughs> Even the Tatooine Wilhelm suffered tragedy. None of these assholes can aim or shoot at the same time. It's kind of easy to look like a Jedi Master when everyone else sucks. Boba Fett, a skilled bounty hunter, can't aim either. Boba Fett, badass bounty hunter, goes out like a bitch. I'm surprised that Sarlacc tentacle didn't shoot Han first. Convenient multiple electromagnets on random pirate ship come in way handy. Thanks for coming after me. Now I owe you one. In The Empire Strikes Back, Han tells Luke, that's two you owe me, Junior. <laughs> but this is the first time Luke has done anything to return the favor, and suddenly Han has flipped the math where he owes Luke one? <laughs> when you're a regular-ass stormtrooper and you hear this laugh, don't you have second thoughts? Then I am a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> you must confront Vader. I guess all the other Jedi had to confront some terrible, extremely difficult evil to become Jedi too, huh? Is Darth Vader my father? Arrest thy maid. God, a cat's out of the bag and this asshole still won't tell him that Darth Vader is his father. But not ready for the burger for you. Oh, come on. This is some nonsense here. Don't you think it would have been better to tell him, like, immediately? And then he could have gotten used to the idea before his friends got in trouble? How does becoming a Jedi settle you in for that Darth Vader is your father whopper? Arguably, the training would have been a lot smoother and you could have prevented him from going so soon. When God am I? The last the Jedi will you be? Another Yoda lie. There is another guy. Walk. Yoda survives just long enough to tell Luke a whole bunch of sh** he already knew. And then in his last breath, finally provides the mere setup to an important bit of new knowledge. He ceased to be Anakin Skywalker and became Darth Vader. So, you know, symbolic technicalities prevented me from telling you the real truth. You can see how my hands were tied. The good man who was your father was destroyed. So what I told you was true, from a certain point of view. Okay, now Obi-Wan is just being a dick. It was purposely misleading, and he has the gall to say, well, I told you the truth as I knew it to be, but you had to play a game to which only I knew the rules for it to be completely true. Also, you didn't know you were playing a game. And, oh, by the way, I f***ed your mom, too. But I was amazed how strongly the Force was with him. I took it upon myself to train him as a Jedi. It was actually Qui-Gon who noticed Anakin's specialness and took it upon himself to train Anakin as a Jedi. I only took over that after Qui-Gon died, but you don't need to know all that right now. You're on a need-to-know basis. You must face Darth Vader again. When he left, he hadn't completed the training yet, and they told him not to face Vader. Now he's back, no more training than before, and now he has to face him. But honestly, what else did they even need to teach him? They've said, don't give in to your anger, and it's many forms at least a hundred times in the last two movies. Was there an anger course coming? Was Yoda going to give him special instructor Bruce Banner to help with all that? The other he spoke of is your twin sister. I'll let you fill in the blank, since from my arcane Jedi point of view, Leia is your bangable friend you didn't need to know was your sister. Leia's my sister. 1983 audiences then went, Oh my god, what an amazing surprise! This series just keeps... Oh my god, they kissed each other several times in this series, didn't they? While the fighters fly into the superstructure and attempt to knock out the main reactor. Death Star has the same weakness as the original Death Star. You know what needs an energy shield? The f***ing main reactor does. We have stolen a small Imperial shuttle. Stealing. That's one. General, count me in. I'm with you too. Where did this asshole come from and how did he hear that? Does he even know what he signed up for? It could be a gangbang for all he knows. Lando looks confused that he's in a room with giant Millennium Falcon wallpaper in it. Yes, my master. The Emperor gives Vader orders and then immediately consults with two purple dudes we've never seen before and never see again. Making me wonder if the purple dudes are somehow above the Emperor. Shuttle Tidarium, transmit the clearance code for shield passage. Hey, isn't that the ship that got stolen from our fleet? Quiet, you. I'm endangering the mission. I shouldn't have come. That's correct. Is R2-D2 gliding across thick indoor flora right now? Even if there's a path, this guy's gonna have a hard time gliding over hilly, muddy, grassy land, isn't he? Goddamn, how many people does that f***ing thing hold? I thought it was just Luke and Han in them. Jesus. Why do stormtroopers have different armor everywhere they go? It couldn't be anything to do with toys, could it? Go for help! Go! Go for help? Can't you radio it in? Jam their comm link! That yeah, jam their comm link! All speeder bikes come standard with communication jamming devices. Instead of just lightsabering this dickhead, Luke jumps over the dickhead speeder bike to take him out manually, and much more slowly than necessary. Ah! Yeah. Ah! How can I possibly avoid this stomp? Oh, I should have gone over it! Well, I'm dead. 
the Ewok haters. Wicked is cool with me, and I'm taking a sin off just for how cute Wicked is, and you can all suck my furry ass if you have a problem with it. That said, the cuteness of Ewoks are the reason Jar Jar Binks exists, even though chronologically Jar Jar shot first. I mean, came first. You want something to eat? Leia offers alien food to an Endor Moonanite. There's no stormtrooper alive who could walk through this forest without making a sound. My son is with them. Are you sure? Aren't you the Emperor? Wouldn't you know? He will come to me. I have foreseen it. Even though I did not foresee that he was on the moon right now, but whatever. In this huge entire moon of Endor, Luke just happens to wander by Leia's discarded helmet. I'm afraid that our two sensors can find no trace of Princess Leia. Then our two sensors aren't worth because she was all over this joint just a little bit ago, and even Luke's faulty Jedi spidey sense thinks you're wrong. Literal deus ex machina. But I do believe they think I am some sort of god. They think I'm some sort of god cliche. It's against my programming to impersonate a deity. What, because it's lying? You've lied plenty of times in this series, so if it's specifically impersonating a deity, that is some very specific programming. Jabba, Jabba, Jabba. Did that Ewok just speak Jabba's name three times? That's some Candyman right there. <laughs> the Ewoks are basically furry lost boys, only with fewer assholes among them. Too many minutes of Ewok cultural misunderstanding bullshit. 3PO, tell them they must be set free. Gokta Toto. Kini Chatu Tomo But it's against his programming, right? He can't impersonate a deity, therefore he cannot give orders to the Ewoks. QED. Tell them if they don't do as you wish, you become angry and use your magic. And here he is again, pretending to be a deity. What the hell was all that nonsense before they got dragged here? If Luke can do this, why can't he untie the ropes? Princess Leia was a what my Atu. C-3PO's story of Star Wars highlights how very little there is to Return of the Jedi. Mainly because there's time for this. All that stuff that happens in Jedi could have been settled in an hour, but Jabba the Hutt lasts nearly 40 minutes, and then they sandwich the Ewoks into this thing for even more exciting waiting around. She died when I was very young. Leia has memories of Natalie Portman. Force is strong in my family. Father has it. I have it. My sister has it. Damn, that took two minutes to get around to the crux of this story, and he still doesn't even come out and say it. It's you, Leia. I know. Somehow. I've always known. Even during this scene? I, I can't tell you. This secret will make you explode, Han. Could you tell Luke? Is that who you could tell? I... Star Wars General Hospital. The Death Star still has the same progress it did at the beginning of the movie. These assholes aren't doing jack to build the rest of it. Wait, earlier Luke told Leia he could feel that Vader was on this very moon right now. But then this scene suggests Vader is only just now arriving on this very moon. The Emperor has been expecting you. I know, Father. Mother Father, this dialogue is stilted. I see you have constructed a new lightsaber. Your skills are complete. When did the lightsaber weaving class take place on Dagobah? Or do you just know how to make one after various force-related activities? Indeed you are powerful, as the Emperor has foreseen. There is never a realistic moment that we see where Luke becomes a badass Jedi. At the end of Empire, he was more mature, he'd seen some but not quite awesome yet. This movie is apparently set a whole year after the last one, although it's incredible to think that they waited that long to save Han. I guess in the meantime, Obi-Wan conducted ghost ops with Luke, but the movie wants him to be awesome right now, with no hint of the journey that got him to this place. Oh crap! Prepare to jump into hyperspace on my mark! All right, stand by. Wait, what? You're standing by and he hasn't given any order, but you still instantly jump your ass to hyperspace? Chain of command, motherfucker, do you speak it? Look, over there! It takes 75% of the guards to go after this one Ewok. Apparently the door opens when you shoot it. Everything that has transpired has done so according to my design. Really? Even the destruction of the first Death Star? Even Luke and Leia's birth? It was I who allowed the Alliance to know the location of the shield generator. And part of that plan was hoping they would steal one of your ships so they could make it to Endor? How did you make that possible, or know it would happen? They very nearly weren't allowed in because Vader sensed Luke was on the ship. Also, why not have two shield generators? One you tell the Alliance about, one that's secret just in case the Rebels, however unlikely, manage to destroy the one that you've let them know exists. That's maybe a little unfair of me to bring up, but seems like more could have been done with this plan to ensure the Rebel defeat. Yeah. Ah! Han's allowed to throw this rather than just get blasted. Red Leader standing by. Grey Leader standing by. Remember the first movie, when you loved this shit? Well, swallow a couple spoonfuls more. None of them can hit shit. Strike me down with it. Give in to your anger. I really don't understand how he suddenly becomes a bad person if he kills Vader and the Emperor. The story requires them to die if the Rebels are to win. So if Luke can't turn Vader, is he supposed to kill these guys with warm feelings? Any reason why our heroes are merely prisoners and not shot to death? Were you looking for me? 
Bring those two down here! Two? You definitely only saw one. In addition to having terrible aim, stormtroopers are also known for being easily taken down by a pack of basically living teddy bears. Can arrows really pierce stormtrooper armor? Good god, man. Being hit by these things at this speed and falling this kind of distance would not hurt anyone. Once on the ground, the stormtrooper is cuddled to death. Oh, come on! This is useless. You might as well be dropping hopes and dreams on the walkers. I mean, how do ordinary rocks drop from 30 feet not just bounce the f*** off a stormtrooper uniform? This battle is all the stupid. Haha, <laughs> so cute. F*** you. Fire at will, Commander. I can't prove it because I'm too lazy to just open the other movie and check, but I think this is recycled Death Star firing footage from A New Hope. And if it's not, it's close enough to be sinned anyway. Han will have that shield down. Han? Like ham? The f***? Why does Han's best friend mispronounce his name? Han and Leia somehow find cover in this position. Come on, come on. Last time you shot the f***ing door and it opened. Now you need R2 to open the door. And oh look, the Empire still uses R2 compatible hardware. Well, I suppose I got hardware this thing. What? Since this Death Star beam can only fire in a straight line, shouldn't all the big rebel ships just start flying around in circles and sh**? Your fleet is lost. Man, these scenes are tedious. Basically, the Emperor invited Luke here so that he could narrate the Rebels' doom to him the whole time. And repeat things over and over. Is there a path to the dark side through boredom? Let the Ewok, who is without sin, cast the first stone. <laughs> Damn, why didn't they do this in the first place? Rather than trying that hang glider rock drop bullsh** from earlier. The flaws of a robotic walker are exposed yet again. Han cops a feel after Leia gets shot in the arm. Use your aggressive feelings, boy. Let the hate flow through you. I still don't know how this takes you to the dark side, but I guess the Force is unforgiving when it comes to killing absolute evil. You have no recourse after you've aggressively killed your father. If only you could find a nicer way. Obi-Wan has taught you well. There he is, giving Obi-Wan all the credit again. Does Yoda not make any ripples in the Force? I will not fight you, Father. I mean, any more than I already have and stuff. We need reinforcements to continue the pursuit. Send three squads to help! First off, apparently there are no identification protocols with the Empire anymore after that first movie. Who is this? What's your operating number? So this works. Also, how are there any Empire guys left? You had a whole army outside waiting for them. And you still have enough for three squads who were previously sitting around just jacking off, even as the Ewoks began winning? <laughs> Good! Does the Emperor not realize that taunting makes somebody not want to do what you want them to do? This shield generator is a super huge satellite thing, so while Luke was down here, why couldn't he turn the satellite in a different direction, and maybe even break it, using the Force? Hell, Magneto could do it in X-Men First Class. You're gonna tell me Luke couldn't do it? Force lightning is introduced as a power ten minutes from the end of the third movie. Now, young Skywalker, you will die. Then kill him already! No! No. With the rules set so strictly for Luke so that he can't kill these Sith Lords without turning to the dark side, with his only hope being able to turn Vader somehow, I can't imagine a scenario that's luckier, other than finding out that Leia is adopted. Just as luckily, there's a place in this room where Vader can let gravity decide this. That said... That was too close. The real question is, why is there a ship-sized path to get to the power generator? The arrogance and stupidity of the Empire is amazing. Hey, that doesn't look like James Earl Jones. Anakin Skywalker does not disappear all Jedi-like, as Obi-Wan did and Yoda did. And he's clearly going to heaven because he shows up later during the Ewok Jubilee. Luke, who had no idea what else was going on, manages to make peace with his dying father and board a shuttle just in time to barely escape these goddamn flames from the Death Star explosion. <laughs> Every one of the heroes are a bunch of lucky bastards. Didn't it take forever to get to the middle of this thing with lots of twisty passages? And why does the Death Star not immediately explode like it did the first time? I'm sure Luke wasn't on that thing when it blew. He wasn't. I can feel it. I can tell because Luke told me I had force power. And now, I can use that power without any training. You love him, don't you? Yes. Leia answers this question as if she actually told Han about Luke being her brother earlier, even though she kept it a secret for no reason. He's my brother. Han's probably also thinking of this scene. Digital cheering! George Lucas doesn't resist the temptation to the dark side and defiantly puts Jar Jar Binks in the original f***ing trilogy. Maybe I don't like the Ewoks like I did when I was a kid, and this new music isn't all that bad, but the Yup song was a pretty fitting ending. And yet, now it's changed to something more special. Not only do you get to go to heaven, Anakin, you get to be your young prequel self again, while Obi-Wan and Yoda stay old as Forever. Final frontier. R2D2, where are you? Where are you? We got some work to do now. This is ground control to Major Tom. You've really made a grave. 
Tommy. How's the peeping? Every day that man remains free is one more failure. 347 days, gentlemen. 347 failures! Terminate her immediately. Not tomorrow, not after breakfast. Now! Any girl. Hey, what's the matter? You smell something? I'm late. I'm late for a very important day. There is no spoon. Oh, here's a fun fact. You made out with your sister, man! Chewy, mm. take care of yourself, okay? Mm. Ooh, brother's got a hug. Beef, it's what's for dinner. James T. Kirk. Amy, I'm finished. No! Bones. I'm wearing a Viridian patch on my back. Spock slapped it there just before we went on Gork and ship. Artu says the chances of survival are 725 to 1. Please, don't quote me the price when I haven't got the time. Tommy! How's the peeping? Tommy? That's a pain thing. I ain't been dropping no eaves, sir, honest. I cannot teach him. The boy has no patience. If you build it, he will come. Hmm. <sighs> Friends you have there. They were in pain. You have the sight now, Neil. There are two rules to remember if you want to have a good time. Rule number one, never run out of Colt 45. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. Shut your eyes, Mary, and don't look at it no matter what happens. My world is fire and blood. Hey, don't tase me, bro! Don't tase me! Uh, look at the blood! Uh, <laughs> Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. Maniacal laugh. <laughs> Maniacal laugh. <laughs> Maniacal laugh. <laughs> I'm endangering the mission. I shouldn't have come. I'm getting what I deserve. I'm reaping what I sow. You think they're supers? Dash, remember what Mom said. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Arizona moon keep shining from the desert sky above. Use your aggressive feelings, boy. Let the heat flow through you. Give real money if he'd shut up your feelings father you can't do this i feel the conflict within you let go of your hate we are the united states government we don't do that sort of thing <laughs>